Hey there, everybody, and welcome back to the Airgun Expo. This is our final day, and we are having so much fun on the range. Angie, the conditions. Beautiful. Perfect. Uh, this was awesome, and we've got a lot more precision air guns coming up to do some more shooting. And uh, so stay tuned. We're not even close to being done yet. We'll let you know. We'll let you know when we're there. Uh, first thing we want to do is thank our sponsors. We have Gateway to Air Guns, Air Guns of Arizona. We also have Predator International with JSP Pellets. You want to look them up at PredatorPellets.com. And this segment is brought to you by Umrex USA. Now we've done some stuff for Umrex already. We launched the Gauntlet 2 here at the show, which was awesome. Um, that's going to stay here for a little bit. I get to play with it uh, after, so stay tuned to my review on that gun. We've done the studio stuff with them, and we've yep. taken a look at all the cool stuff they offer. Um, but we haven't, we really didn't shoot that stuff that we had on the table, and I couldn't obviously bring it all out yet. Maybe there's something later. Uh, but I wanted to kind of show you guys s sort of the kind of, I won't say the extreme end, but versatility. Versatility. Thank you. That was perfect. The versatility yeah. that they have, <laughs> yeah, that they have uh, like depth on the bench, so to speak. So we have the Surge Max Elite. Now you have the Surge Max, right? right? In 177. In 177. This is the Surge Max Elite, so they've done a few upgrades to it. We've got a moderator. I think the other one had a moderator, too, yep. on it. Uh, we've got some pretty decent open sights. Just a basic brake barrel air gun. About a $150 price point. Comes with an optic. But what I really like about brake barrels like this, just shoot them with open sights. Yep. You know, they're a close-range gun, 15, 20 yards. Uh, we're actually going to be shooting a gong at about 27 yards, and I'm going to see if we can hit it uh, just free-holding. A little bit of a challenge, you think? Yeah, probably. Yeah, pro uh, you'll be fine. <laughs> uh, so we're going to do that. And then we've got the Walther Rain. Now, this is part of their stable, uh, Walther Arms. So when you look at this gun, um, this is like one of the few bullpups, even when I first looked at this sometimes back, sometime back, one of the few bullpups that really, I don't know, I liked it. I'm not a bullpup guy. You guys know that if you watch my stuff, not my favorite thing. This one, for whatever reason, sort of I connected with. Uh, I don't know if it's the way it fits I, or, or the aesthetics. I like that you don't see the bottle. Yeah. They kind of hit it. Um, this one is in 25 caliber, so that's very cool. It's ambidextrous. If you want to move the cocking bolt around, you can load it from different angles. We're going to get to that here in a little bit. And I put on here the Hawk Air Max Touch Scope, which when I first saw this at SHOT Show, I thought I'd had a problem with my glasses because this is a scope you actually put your eye right up against it. Mm -hmm. um, but I love that for a bullpup because I'm not having to fight eye relief. I just stick it there and I'm set. I don't have to think about and my hold and position and it's so light it doesn't, it doesn't screw up or throw off my center of balance. So for me, this kind of scope on this kind of platform is awesome. It's relatively, relatively quiet because I have the integrated moderator. But now let's actually do a little shooting, okay? Well, so, before we do that, can we mention the rest because these are awesome. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Go ahead. These are from Ransom International. Guys, check them out. They make all sorts of rests for pistols, rifles. These are actually called the multi-cal rests for pistols and rifles. Um, they're adjustable. They're super stable. Love them. So check them out, Ransom International. Okay. So why don't you grab that Surge Max Elite and walk me through... Uh, your thoughts on the gun. You want me to, you want to shoot from here and I'll just move over there? All right. Might be safer for you. Might be safer <laughs> for me. Well, my thoughts on, it's, it's really kind of tactical looking. Um, I like the thumb hole grip and the safety's right here. It, the safety's a little hard, but it is a $150 gun. It's right there in front of the trigger. Um, the option to put an optic on it. I prefer open sights with this one, honestly. I really don't want to put an optic on it. I think the open sights, it shoots just fine like it is. Um, that's about all I have, Rick. So okay. can I just go ahead and shoot it? Go for it. And we're shooting the JSB Jumbo, um, exact jumbo. They're 15.89 grain. Um, just a solid 22 dome pellet for target shooting. And if Joe was here up here, he said they're great for smacking everything. <laughs> It is an automatic safety, so you got to remember that. Hold still. Oh, I missed. You're living up to your nickname, Angie. You had to mention it before we started. That's why. That was mean. 
I it's, shouldn't have done that. I put lotion on this morning too. So it's All right, go tell us to go fast. You put lotion on. You all heard him whisper, right? <laughs> Got it, it. How is it to cock? Do you find it too hard to cock it, or you find it's it not, not reasonable? Yeah, it's reasonable. It's not too bad. It's not. I mean, I wouldn't say that a child could cock it. They would need help. But it's not real bad. You want to show me up? I want to shoot. I want to shoot it now. Okay. You know, brake barrels are kind of my thing. I'm going to stand right here. So when you load your brake barrel, make sure you secure the, the, the barrel. No, oh, please hit it. Please hit it. Oh! oh I Rick! Went, I went right over top. <laughs> I was like, was it dead center or was it underneath? I went under it. All right, Angie. I should have let me go first. You should have put the camera. You should have put <laughs> That's Everybody's it. That's what's me. happening. No, it's not wind. It's, it's the cameras me. are on because we were shooting it and he was hitting it every time. There, there you is. go. It is shooting a little left. A little low left there? Yep. Well, you know what you can do with that if you're hitting low left? You can just adjust your sights. So you got fully adjustable sights here? Yep. Let's see. No, now he went right. So this is not what you would call the Rick Clinic of freehold. <laughs> <laughs> Brake barrel shooting. Huh. Uh, nope. Maybe I should take it back from you. No, I should have just not touched the sights. <sighs> We're about to sit down at this table, Angie, about what's going to happen here. Maybe we thought we were... Well... A lot more awesome than we are. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Dead center. Right, I do the same exact thing, Rick. Yes, this is a uh, this is Rick eating a little humble pie this morning. That's all right. I need that. Nope, I pulled it right. Is there a particular way, Rick, that you hold a springer? When you're standing like that, is there a certain grip or form or? Just like he is. Uh, I mean, not like I'm doing it. Um, I mean, you know, it's something I don't do. I don't shoot no, springers no. So, or brake I mean, barrels. Ideally, maybe you know what? I was shooting from here earlier, Angie. So I'm gonna move right here. I, I think that'll make all the difference in the yeah, world. Yeah, that three feet. Let's see. Gonna... The, it's it's the angle, and, and I'm pretty sure the the. Magnetic force geometry of me standing here is going to make all the difference. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Well, we'll find out. Yeah. If my buddy Scott here was here, we could be talking about the space-time continuum. And yeah, and he's not. So you're having a one-sided conversation. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> um, Travis, I think the, the thing is with any Springer, you want to be as consistent as possible. Now, this has a How do you do that? gas ram. Well, a lot of practice, but if you're going to grab it, ideally you want to grab it right where it's going to balance for you. Uh huh. You don't want to grip it because that's not going to help you. Um, so you hold it light? Yeah. Oh, it went right under it. What kind of trigger pull weight are we talking about on that? Um, it is about, I would say it's five. There you um, go. It was. It was this. It's got to be right here, Angie. This is where I needed to be. I said, <laughs> I'd yeah, because that's where you sighted it in. That is. Yeah, <laughs> that makes all the difference in the world. Um, not really. Hey, if, yeah. it, if it mentally makes you shoot better, then that's uh, it what, may that's... be more mental. But in all reality, it is a lot of practice, Travis. So okay. if you take time 
to learn the gun, and we really haven't spent a lot of time with this, but if you take time to really learn the gun, you'll yeah. find out if it wants to be here or here. You'll find out, like this one, you really don't have a choice but to use it like a, a thumb hole grip. Uh -huh. But I've had some guns where the thumb, you want to run your thumb up the back of a springer instead of wrapping it around. Yeah. Um, the trigger is actually, I don't find the trigger bad um, at all. I'm, I'm not nearly as particular as some of the other folks in the gallery. Do, do, um, do they need to be broken <laughs> into like a PCP does? Uh, this probably need a couple yeah. hundred shots. So they need to be seasoned, seasoned as well. Yeah. Or find the, the place in, in the space-time continuum to stand like if you were doing. If you find the vortex black hole space-time <laughs> space continuum, then you're going to be in great shape. Yeah. Uh, uh, that was just me. Nicked it, though. You're so, being a hog, Rick. Yeah, what's all right, going on all right. here? It's because I'm really like, where did I hold the diagonal thing where I was hitting it every time? Um, all right. Now, you're not going to see this, but let's see if I can hit the 50. <laughs> Good luck. Um, just free hold, all right? There oh, you did. Well, what in the world? <laughs> no, I, and we actually sighted it for, actually, really didn't do any much sighting with this. We just kind of plink. This is a plinking rifle, okay? This isn't a match accurate. Here, you take it. Um, it's a plinking rifle. It's not a match accurate gun. It's something you're going to go in the backyard and just shoot with. Um, it's a lot of fun. I mean, I can shoot and shoot and shoot and shoot and never get tired shooting this gun. Is the cocking effort low enough that a a 12-year-old kid could shoot it? Um, oh, I'm probably not the best. Well, at that, we could have you try it. Oh. Yeah, come <laughs> up here. No, come up here so everybody can see you. Okay. All right. All right. We'll do we'll do one of these. All right. Let's make Travis do what he doesn't like to do things again. Yeah. That's yeah. okay. Okay. You it's got okay. the mic back there. I got I'll even shoot it. I'll even shoot it. All right. It. And I'll stand in Rick's time continuum you need to space spend, yeah, here. Yeah, right there. That I is think that's where you had it. And I saw you I, had your feet just it like is, that. That's the sweet spot. Okay. You want that. That's oh, not, secure that's not. the barrel with your other hand. So take that hand off and grab the barrel. There you go. And now put the pellet in. Why do I want to do that? Because in case the anti-bear trap fails, yeah. you don't lose your hand. Well, I don't want to lose my hand. No, the thing could pop pellet. back up and no, snack I, I use that face. hand all the time. I know. So, okay. yeah. Just an so extra added bit of So that's the gig. Okay, yep. so. Slam okay, it. so now I'm doing things backwards. Slam it home. Okay. Now you got to push that forward. Okay. I got you. So it comes on automatically. Yep. All right, so hold her soft. Yep. Okay, this needs to be lighter. Okay. There you go. Just loose. And I'm basically bracketing the target. I'm just putting the crosshairs dead center in the, in the, in the little green circle there. Okay. Oh, right, you know, this you is really easy. I don't know what you guys are struggling yeah, with. Yeah, thank you, Travis. Can I try again? Yeah, absolutely. I'm standing in your place. You got to stand in my spot there. Okay. What it was, you see, we're trying to kind of curve the bullet. <laughs> oh, that, yeah, around the, that leg around the rubber. There. That's probably it. Oh, I'm wiggly. There's a hole over here. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Joe. Joe's looking out for me. Yeah. I go. got it. That's right, Rick. That's all right. No, I actually, it kind of is a testament of you need to spend a little time with the gun. And right? stand in the right spot. And stand in the right spot. No, it is really more uh, get some time with the gun. And really, um, I, I wouldn't actually shoot this at 30 yards. I would be shooting this at 10 or 15 yeah, yards. Yeah, it's just okay. a backyard fun gun. Backyard fun gun. Um, so that's actually a little bit longer, especially with I don't shoot very well freehold. But you know, earlier I was banging it, so I thought, why not do it today? Um, Surge Max Elite, $150. Just a great gun for the backyard and just having fun with it. And unlike this one, you don't have to fill it with high-pressure air. But if you do have high pressure air, this is a very cool gun. Let's go ahead and move this out of the way. Yeah, that's kind did of... we mention this was 22 cal? I think we did. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, did. Okay. So that's look, shooting 22. And look at her um, rest has her name on it there, her ransom rest. Did you guys see that in the camera? And she's got her name engraved on it. I'm going to um, back up here. I want to show them. Cheryl, can you zoom in on that little spot right there? There you go. Thank you. 
Okay, do you see what that says? It says made in Germany. Hmm. Okay, so this um, is not, th this is not your sort of East Asian import gun. This is made in Germany. It's about $600. Uh, this is a different level of air gun. Um, it's not like the super high end, like some of the stuff we've seen uh, here this week, but it is a good middle of the road gun. Um, yeah, we got pellets right here. Thanks, Travis. Um, it is right around $600, and it has this super nice compact look to it. It's not heavy. I don't think that's heavy, Angie. Do you? No, no, not at all. And, and it's it's pretty evenly distributed. Yeah. The weight. So it's got a great weight distribution. We've got a pressure gauge over here. You're going to be able to fill that. You want to grab that, Cheryl? So this fills to 232 or 230 bar, which is like 3,400 3, and some change PSI. Um, you get a lot of shots. It's not regulated. 3360. 3360. Thanks, Trevor. Oh, it's math in my head. But yeah. Um, I think this, so. uh, <coughs> excuse me, it's not regulated. Um, it's just a fun gun to shoot. Now, what I thought we could do is we've got some spinners. Well, you know what? Let's shoot the paper. We haven't shot the paper yet. No. Do you want to shoot the cider? Sure. All right. I'm going to let Angie do the shooting. Before we do that, I'm going to show you how this, how cool this mag is. Um, let's get, uh, let's, let's do the mag and then I'll come move the camera or you can move the camera, whatever. <clears throat> okay. So this magazine, it's, I think it's an eight shot mag. We'll find out. Probably. It's 25. So um, all right. So most of the magazines have some weird sort of loading thing you got to do, or you got to block the hole so the pellet doesn't fall through or some weirdness. This actually has a little block in the back so that when it, when it's out of the gun, it pre prevents the pellet from falling out. So when you go to load it, you just roll it over to the hole, drop the pellet in, roll it over the hole, drop the pellet in. Yeah, it's a two finger deal instead of a three finger. <laughs> it's pretty neat. I didn't realize it had that little that little catch there until I was playing with it earlier today. I like the little cartridge mags when I did the review on this, um, but this when I was looking at it again, I was like, oh, I, I didn't even notice that. That's pretty cool. Now you can also put it in left side or right side. Oh, you ever have to cock it for me? And when you put it in, then it opens up that little slot. So it's just a little cartridge. Now you go ahead and. Shut the, now, how did you find that cocking smooth. lever? Smooth. It's very smooth. It's got, if, let me grab it real quick, safety on? Yep. Okay. It's got this little cocking handle here, so when you grab it, you've got something to really hold on to. Um, I really like that type of feature. Okay, so I'm going to come move the camera, and you're going to shoot the bottom target, Angie? Okay. need to wear these? No, you're all set. Whatever, whatever. No, nah, it's hard with this, so go ahead and just get comfortable. Now I'm on, so I was, we were shooting at 100, so let me oh, back yeah. you down to about 25. Let me know if that's good for you. Yep. Okay. Perfect. Now I noticed this scope, her eyes right up against it. You don't want to put this scope on anything with recoil. Mm -hmm. right. You mean to adjust it? No, no, take another shot. Let's see where it's hitting and, and maybe we'll then adjust it. Although we were hitting at 100, so maybe we just leave it where it is. Yeah, same, same spot. Hole? Yeah, just about. Do you want to adjust it? Sure. You want to leave the elevation the same? Mm -hmm. just... No, put it right on the dot. We'll, we, we'll be all right. And it needs to come left. Thank you. I always forget the left and right gets me goofy, but the up and down I got. Oh, too far left. Okay. Any cycling issues or does it feel nice? It feels nice. No issues. There you go. 
So I leave it like it is. It, just wait. You took some of the red out, didn't you? Or some of the yep, orange? Yeah, just a little bit. You want to just come up one click and left one click? I'll give that a shot. Oh. It's a little bit too far left. Just yeah. come back right one. It's probably going to be probably a good middle of the road spot right there. Yep, that's okay, good. Okay, we got a question. What's our question? Can you recommend a good scope for carrying the uh, uh, The one we're running right now, the Hawk, it's the Air Max 30. Uh, excuse me, the Air Max Touch. It's with a 30 millimeter tube. So, th yeah, I love this. Actually, this scope for bullpups in general, I really like. As long as you're comfortable with a 12 power magnification, um, this isn't going to be a real high magnification scope. But for me, the kind of shooting I like to do, this is really nice. Um, yeah, you're drilling. So you want to yeah. shoot a want to shoot one of the orange targets? Sure. Why, why don't you reload the mag? I'll go get the camera reset. Because what we're going to do is we're we're shooting right now at only 25 yards, but we're going to take this and stretch this to 100 yards, and we're going to shoot the quadrant target that Air Guns of Arizona has been letting us use. And that thing is awesome. So it is one of the neatest little training targets I've ever had a chance to work with because it gives you feedback as to where your shot's hitting without having to go run down and replace paper all the time. Um, I can definitely see I'm going to have a set of those here at the range because uh, they're nice. Let me go yeah, get you set nice. on the orange targets here. And if you guys have questions in the mix, please let us know. I saw this one at SHOT Show, and um, Mark Davis went over the features and everything with me. I don't remember everything, but I was really, really hoping to get to check this one out. And look, here I am checking yep. it out. Okay. okay, ready? Yep, so I can't see what you're hitting, so you have to walk me through where you're hitting, okay? All right. Which one are you shooting for? Low left. Okay. Just right of the bowl. Bullseye. Now, would you think this is too loud for your backyard? No. Yeah, I don't think so either. It's super nice. A little loud. Now, those bulls we're shooting at, I think, are two inch targets total. Left. And a tiny little breeze coming. Left and low. Left. I think you should do this too, Rick. I'll do it. Okay, you, you may have hit the last one. Might be. I think you're just next to the bowl. Gotcha. Nope. One more. Don't waste it. <laughs> I have no idea. It might have went through the bowl, but I don't know. Just taking out the, the center like you like to do, Angie? Yeah. Okay, let's see what we got here. Um, so we've shot a couple mags. We're at about 180 bar. So three, four mags, I think we're going to be good to go. Yeah. Okay. Can we load it for you? Yeah, that'd be nice. Just a little low? How big do you think that group was? Two inches. I think you'll do better, Rick. You think so? Yeah. We'll see. Well, it may be two inches. On this bull, this left is fairly flat. Yeah, it wasn't. I think you'll do better. Okay, let's see. He's the expert, so. Oh, goodness. Okay, yeah, that's probably about a two inch group. Okay, so I am going to get comfortable this. Okay. Button right up above the... Thank you.
You do want to get your eye right up against the scope. If not, if the sight pictures can wander around on this. It may have been my... May have been your problem. Yeah, it may have been my problem. Where are you hitting? Same spot. Pretty much the same spot. So guys, if it shoots like it did for me, just know you need to practice with it. Well, in this, um, let's just check my mic. I'm out. Take a look at that group, Angie. I think you should try it again and just change okay. your technique. Okay. But you want to get right up against, you want to get tight up against the scope so that if the sight picture, there's nothing on the outside moving. You want to have a full, clear sight picture <coughs> without any movement at all. Less than an inch. Oh, way less. Oh, yeah. It's a little low, so we just adjust the scope to accommodate for the point of impact. You've got 155 bars, so I think you're probably good for another mag. I would like to be able to say for like certainty, this is using an LW barrel. I don't know if it is or not, um, but it's certainly a very good barrel. Maybe somebody can look it up on, on Umarex's website and maybe they'll tell you what you're using. But I think you got to get closer with your eye. And you got to really get up on it. Yeah, I would have to move the scope back for me because I'm just kind of pushing it. Yeah, bullseye. So just pull it, pull it back way, it's 25. So pull it way back so you want to make sure you have a full clear sight picture. What kind of, it tells you what kind of barrel they're using. Mm. Oh yeah, there's a lot of improvement there. Is it doing better? Oh yeah. So you got to get your eye right up against that scope. So if you had a more traditional scope, you wouldn't have that issue. Um, different strokes for different folks. Rick, is it a two-stage trigger? It is. Um, I, and I don't know what kind of adjustments are. I think you've been in, in one of these guns because uh, I think I sent mine to you, the mm -hmm. original one I had. So are you able to adjust the trigger inside? Or are there adjustments no. you can get to? It's not adjustable? No. Okay. It doesn't have a power adjustment either. Yeah. You just basically get it and just shoot it. It just is what it is. Yep. You just get it, put, oh, that's it. I put think lead in it, and go to town. Besides one, I think I did better than oh, you. Oh, let me see. <laughs> let me see. The one that counts now, Angie. Yeah. Oh, goodness, yes. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so you figured out it was technique. Yep. Well, how many times this week have we learned that how you shoot it really matters? I mean, the gun, it, it really does matter and it, a ton. Yeah, and each gun's different, right? Yeah. And so well, that's you, why we do reviews and stuff with the guns, so that you guys know, because like you said, every gun is different. Yeah, and you use different techniques for every gun. We can start, you know, we can talk about the Catron, how we had to hold that different, how the brake barrel was held different, how the bull pups are held different. They all use different techniques. Yep. So what we're going to do now, Angie, I think what we'll do is I don't want to, just make this too long right but because we'll sit here and shoot this all day mm -hmm. um, but i think what we should do is take a couple shots at the hundred at the quadrant target okay. and while you get loaded up i'll go ahead and rework the camera i'm gonna shoot first you uh what would you prefer to do i'll, I'll shoot first i'm already sitting here Are you going to give me any tips, Rick? Um, well, you were we adjusted it. the scope, right? Oh, so we did. 
it's going to be sort of take a shot, check where you hit. I mean, we were at 10 power, we were splitting um, right between the last line and the start of the boxes on the reticle. So I think that's your starting point. And you may be more at the line since we did kind of bring the scope up a little bit. But I think that's where we can sort of start. How's that, Sue? About as good as I can get it. What pellet are you shooting, Ange? JSB, of course. These are the 25s. Okay. 25, did, 25. Did you guys chronograph it? No, we didn't. Okay. We just shot it. Yeah. It's one of those guns you just shoot. Get out of the box, put air in it, shoot it. Yeah, that's, and it's just. And it shoots good like that. <laughs> just a really nice gun. I would absolutely think this would be a great backyard plinking gun. Mm -hmm. um, but if we can hit at with authority at 25 yards, I know it shoots well at 50. If we can hit in any sort of reliability at 100, now that sort of opens up your opportunities, right? I, I agree. Low. Are you going for the quadrant? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I just filled it. So let's give it a couple shots. Mm -hmm. I might have put a little too much air in it. Might be a little hot in there too. There it is. Never mind. <laughs> That's a four inch quadrant target we're shooting at at 100 yards. Shooting a little low. the rail that holds the quadrant target. <laughs> Larry said don't shoot the rails. Oh, did he? <laughs> I wasn't present for that. Okay. Oh, okay. I'll give you a pass this time. Oh, high and left. Yeah, but that was close to the sweet spot. really close Andy. it gets so I when I'm shooting this target I just don't want to stop until I get it that's what makes it a good target oh that was way off yeah well you just got a little tailwind right right before you're shooting now you're gonna feel it here okay is it still blowing yeah, yeah hold on a little right to left and behind oh. same spot Three in the same spot. Too bad that uh, swinger wasn't right there. <laughs> oh, oh, you're out. You know that's. Uh, that went way too fast. Okay. Rick. That's not bad though. I mean, we're yeah, talking a little, oh, yeah. little 22 bullpup trying to shoot a. 25, but yeah. 25, trying to shoot a uh, quadrant target 100 yards away. You know, I have the, I have the crony right there. Let me just take a shot over the crony. Let's see what it's doing. Yeah, why not? Yeah, and you can go yeah, ahead. Somebody and get the... ready to do some math. Travis, I'm, ready I'm ready. Math? I'm always ready to do math. You know me. And I'm, what I'm going to do, guys, I'm just so that we can kind of go a little more quickly. It's all right. Let's brush. Well, my my sister would say, everything's a competition. Um, you want me to put the crown? I'm ready. No, I'm just going to step in front and shoot over the crown. What's the grain? 25.4. 25.4. Chronograph is on. Remember why it was like low eight. Seven eighty-eight. Yeah. So what are we looking at? Forty, thirty-five, thirty. Thirty-five foot pounds on the dot. Okay. So I had the first box. Okay. All the way to the right. So that's a that's a pretty good stretch for a gun. You know. That's a lot. That's a long way for this gun. Yeah, shooting at that speed. You're asking a lot. Oh, clear. So this this is more about skill and a little bit of luck. Yeah, I think you're right. Get it on the first line. Time. A little left. Hit the rail. Got the rail. Got it. Coming back over. 
That's what I love about that Target. It's great for sighting guns in. Hey, I tell you what, they're, they're going to sell a lot of those at Air Guns of Arizona. Because paperwork can get kind of boring. Yeah. The nice thing about the rain, though, because it's not regulated, you can cycle and shoot as fast as you want. You don't have to worry about the, you know, the plenum going dry or low, whatever you want to call it. Are you hitting low left? Yep. Oh, come on. I get one extra one because I burned one on the car. Yeah. <laughs> you like that? Yeah. Any, okay. Make you know, it count, Rick. Only makes sense, right? It's like a mulligan, right? Yeah, yeah. Come on! <laughs> that was a clean hit too, he man. Takes the mulligan and makes a hole in one. <laughs> oh nice. man! Yeah, when you own the range, you kind of got a little cheating going on. This little guy back there going, <laughs> you can tell he's off camera. I wonder how high that was the arc to, to get it there. I'm shooting. Well, I mean, I could calculate. I'm it. shooting like that. Yeah. Um, but still, I mean, that. First of all, that's a ton of fun. Yes. So yeah. if you go down to the range. And you just want to plank and have fun. Like this is a gun, six hundred bucks, and we, we know once we know where to hit, and once you know your holdover, and really everybody that sticks their eye up against this is going to have a slightly different hold. Okay, so I was kind of more back to that, right between the big line and the square for me. Okay, um, but once you know it, gosh, the fact that we basically kept everything like that. I mean, come on. Yeah. Really? This is a hundred. It's a hundred yards, six hundred dollar gun. I would hunt and this. having fun and having fun. Yeah, gosh, it's I would 50 yards yeah. all day and you can sling it. You can do all kinds of cool things. With yeah, this. it's super light. It is just very, very nice. Guys, we're going to wrap it up. I want to say thank you to Umrex USA. Um, and we're not done with them yet. Well, I hope never done with those. Guys. Right. Um, but we've got more <laughs> of, of their stuff coming up later in the day. But we've got some precision stuff coming up now. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So stay with us. I want to thank all our sponsors. Gateway to Air Guns, Air Guns of Arizona. And they've been really nice to let us use all of their gear. They've been really cool to let us use a bunch of their stuff. And we couldn't shoot anything, <laughs> not anything, if uh, good old Joe wasn't here with Predator International. Yay. And Yay. I appreciate and Joe that. Joe like, I need a nap. He's, he's, <laughs> Joe is he's out. He's about getting so ready to tired. leave. Joe is out. We done rung. And poor Joe. I mean, a little kudos to Joe here. Um, we all are staying right here at the ranch. Poor Joe's driving all the way back to the hotel every night. Next time, bring a tent. Yeah. And you'd be like, set. Uh, two weeks of moving pallets didn't help either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So He's I hanging mean, in there, though. If, if it wasn't for all the sponsors uh, that have come together to help us do this, this wouldn't have happened. I hope you guys have been enjoying it. Check out our website, theairgunexpo.com. All the stuff you've seen here all week is going to be posted there. You can go watch it anytime you want. And you can reach out to every single exhibitor. You can go right to their page, fill out a form, and get right in touch with them directly. So please make use of that. Guys, we're going to go reset, maybe even have a little early lunch, and we'll be back for some more shooting. Thanks for watching. See ya.